Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. From the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this is The Gateway. It's Thursday, April 18th. I'm Jonathan All. A U.S. Supreme Court decision last year stripped most federal protections from wetlands. That's made cooperation between federal, state, and local conservation groups more important than ever. We're trying to uh, become more formal in our uh, in our management, in our, in our cooperative management. We'll learn more at a nature preserve along the Illinois River coming up on The Gateway. Madison County voters in the Metro East are one step closer to taking a symbolic vote on seceding from Illinois. St. Louis Public Radio's Will Bauer reports the county board approved placing a non-binding referendum on November's ballot. Largely along party lines, the Republican-controlled board passed the referendum by a 15-7 to 7 vote last night. It will symbolically ask voters if Madison County should separate from Cook County, home to Chicago, and if the county board should explore secession with other downstate counties. Local proponent Dave Stouffer of Troy says this is a good move that will let the voters decide. This is the single most democratic move that any group of concerned citizens can make is to ask the people their opinion. Even though proponents acknowledge that secession is highly unlikely, they say the referendum will quantify downstate's disapproval of Chicago's influence on Illinois' politics. In Edwardsville, I'm Will Bauer. St. Louis Public Radio. The Missouri legislature has approved $2.2 million to support Governor Mike Parson, sending Missouri National Guard troops and members of the Highway Patrol to the Texas-Mexico border. The Missouri Senate voted yesterday 30-2 to to approve the House Supplemental Budget Bill. Since senators made no changes to the legislation, the bill now goes to Parson. As a result of an executive order issued by the governor, troops have been helping patrol the border since March. Senator Lincoln Huff says funding will go towards expenses associated with that order. This is essentially us just paying the bills on an ongoing operation that the governor initiated uh, you know, at the beginning of March. Parsons' executive order is currently in effect until June 13th. It could be extended. Fans of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra can look forward to visiting a reopened Powell Hall in September of 2025. As St. Louis Public Radio's Lauren Brennicke reports, there's finally an end in sight for the more than $100 million project. On a tour of the construction site, orchestra officials highlighted a number of new features for the renovation and a 65,000 square foot expansion, which will make the building accessible to more people. Marie Helen Bernard is president and CEO of the St. Louis Symphony Orchestra. She says the renovations include graded floor and elevators for people who use wheelchairs. This building was built in 1925. We just did not think about access the way we think about it today. So I think everything is just so exciting. Construction is more than half finished. Bernard says she hopes several new entrances will encourage symphony newcomers to visit the historic venue. I'm Lauren Brennicke, St. Louis Public Radio. An Illinois Senate proposal to ban single-use toiletry containers from hotels is now moving to the Illinois House. The bill aims to reduce plastic waste and requires Illinois hotels to find a more eco-friendly alternative by 2026. Democratic State Senator Lauren Fine is the bill's sponsor. She says some hotel chains are already making the transition, but the legislation is still vital. This encourages a change in behavior. Uh, Right now, we are putting so much plastic pollution into our waterways that it will no longer be safe for aquatic consumption and then human consumption. Hotel chains like Marriott International have worked to phase out single-use bottles, switching over to larger containers of products like shampoo and bath gel. A U.S. Supreme Court decision last year stripping wetlands from most federal protections is drawing more attention to the threatened ecosystems and what states can do. Reporter Cameron Cuntinello visited the Emaquan Nature Preserve along the Illinois River to learn more about wetland restoration and the birds, fish, and reptiles which call Emaquan home. Emaquan is now home to almost 300 species. The 6,000-acre site was completely drained in 1924 and was once the largest agricultural farm in Illinois. 
The Nature Conservancy purchased the property in 2000 and began restoring the original lakes and wetlands. Now it serves as a learning hub to find new techniques to help wetlands and wildlife thrive. Federal protections for wetlands were weakened by a U.S. Supreme Court decision in 2023. That decision didn't impact the Nature Conservancy, but instead hurts the equally important wetlands which can be found on farmland and private property across the state. That's according to Randy Smith. He's the Illinois River Project Director for the Nature Conservancy. He took me on a tour of the site and some of the projects they're testing. Those are research opportunities and management opportunities that um, if we can if we can be the guinea pig to figure out some different removal techniques or more efficient removal techniques um, or and then can um, can use those techniques in other places and, and kind of expand you know expand that work we're, we're happy to do that one of those projects is from a Washington company called whoosh they're testing a machine at Emmaquan which they hope will help manage invasive silver carp populations in the Illinois River it's a, an experimental fish ladder and fish sorting structure. The machine uses artificial intelligence to identify fish as they travel through the fishway, which would be placed near dams and other points of travel. So far, it's mainly been used to assist salmon in getting past man-made dams. But in theory, silver carp could be held by the machine while other species would go free. Smith says silver carp has threatened many of the native species in the river and lakes at Emiquan. Some invasive plant life and birds have also established themselves at the site. Emiquan Nature Preserve is adjacent to the Emiquan National Wildlife Refuge, which can cause some confusion for visitors. But the two sites do often work together. We're trying to uh, become more formal in our uh, in our management and our in our cooperative management, having some some established goals and things. Trying to trying to provide the best habitat for our target groups of species that rely on these places. According to the Illinois Department of Natural Resources, just 2.6% of Illinois' landscape is wetland. But more than 40% of species depend on that wetland habitat. That includes tens of thousands of migratory birds each year, who use it as a stopping ground during their journeys. Smith says many bird species follow temperature changes as they migrate. A lot of those species are are early nesters, and so that's part of it. They want to get to the breeding grounds, they want to establish those uh, territories that they're going to defend, they want to find those best nesting sites. Um, a lot of nesting ecology studies show that, that within a species, um, birds that nest earlier in the season typically have higher nest survival and higher nest hatching rates. He says birds want to be in their nesting spot when the ice melts and the bugs emerge. In a year like 2024, where the weather warms up sooner, many migratory birds follow the food and leave sooner than usual. But some species only leave when the day gets longer, meaning they might miss the bug emergence. Smith says studies are underway to determine how that may impact populations. He says wetlands are crucial for many species to thrive. The U.S. Supreme Court decision rolling back Clean Water Act protections for wetlands allowed them to be destroyed without a permit. A bill proposed in the Illinois General Assembly would create a requirement for those permits again at the state level. I'm Cameron Cutinello. That story comes to us from member station WCBU in Peoria. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a member-supported service of the University of Missouri, St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Jonathan All, and from the St. Louis Public Radio newsroom, this has been The Gateway. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com.